Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the episode of Pat Taste Performance. Today in the driveway, on the back of the Honda Element, we have a still HL45C long reach, extended reach hedge trimmer. Okay, this is here for a complaint that it runs and dies after a few minutes. Now, full disclosure, I did not experience that issue. I cannot stress this any time. If you take in a repair of any sort, especially if it's not yours, verify the issue. I want to show you something. These are our bushes all the way. I trimmed all of those bushes using the still trimmer. I could not replicate his complaint. So I told him, there's nothing wrong with it, come pick it up. There's no diagnostic fee because I trimmed all my bushes. That is the trade. He says, you know what? Just do a tune up on it. So that's what we are going to do today. I called our local steel dealer and they wanted 35, 40 bucks for a tune up kit on this machine. I find that a lot of money. So, I'm gonna be using a kit that we actually sell, and you get two tune-up kits for less than the price of one, so you're good for next year. Or, whenever you choose to tune it up. This guy says this machine is 10 years old, never had any issues. So, let's look at the kit kits that we're gonna be using today. It's gonna to come in this Padded package. Okay, inside this kit, there's gonna be two. Inside this package, there's gonna be two. So you save one for later. So look what we got. Two sets of fuel lines. Two primer bulbs, two air filters. Uh oh, off camera. We're off camera. And two fuel filters. You only get one spark plug. Transparency here. I'm not a fan of aftermarket spark plugs. Go get yourself the factory NGK BPMR7A. But here's a unique thing with me. I do not change spark plugs unless they need it. I mean, it's, um, I think it's a waste. I very rarely do. Uh, so we're just going to leave the spark plug alone. So let's move on with this tune-up kit. So this is going to go in the garbage. We're going to put one of these back. Primer bulbs are the same. I keep primer bulbs. I only replace them when they pop. So primer bulb will go back. So we will be replacing one set of fuel lines. Fuel filter, air filter. Let's get into this thing. All right, so here we are. Let's go to see how this side slings out. Let's go to this side here. Let's press here. Wow. You have to give this thing some force. All right, so let me just get a little screwdriver out. We need some assistance. Just push in and bam. Look at that filter. Okay, there we go. We now revealed that we have these two screws right here. Let's take those out. 
Let's uh, swing that out of the way as well. And we'll put our hardware, whatever we take out, we'll put our hardware in there so we don't lose track of it. All right, so let's get these two 10 millimeter bolts. I'm sorry, eight millimeter. Now, if you want to use an impact, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't like using an impact on smaller stuff, like two cycle, because I'm just always just afraid. I just think that they're nimble, but that's just a preference. You want to hit with your gun and zip, zap, zoom, go ahead. It is literally not that much of a difference time-wise. I want this to be a very intimate, personal experience. So let's look what we have here. So we know, here's your note, that this line goes here, and then this other one disappears somewhere else in the back. Yeah, so this tall line goes up here, and this croggy line goes here on the bottom. But this is why we pulled the carburetor so we have easier access to the fuel line. See, I just pulled that right off. So let's pull the carburetor out and then we have better access. That's fine. Just take our screwdriver, push down, and now we are free. So now we can pull the carburetor out. And put it to the side and now we have access to this grommet can we take this ice keep that gasket there so now we can get a visual on how this needs to sit right here in the tank. Let's wipe this all off. Let's clean this up. So when we pull this out, nothing goes inside the tank. So, you know, you could make this as crazy and complex, as clean as you want. I just want to make sure and we're working the new one in. Nothing falls in and gums up our fuel filter. Let's go here. And we're just gonna pry it. You see that? That's all you gotta do. And she's free. And the filter comes out. So, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the OEM versus the Pate's performance. So let's install the fuel filter. Now I don't like to stick in anything dry. Spit the tip. And then you put it in the hole. There we go. So now let's compare. Seems pretty good to me. So this is a go. Put some a little, little persuasion on there. Spit on that again. I'll put some lube on it, whichever way you want. And then we just kind of have to work this in. Boom. Wow, that was like super easy. All right, you know what? You guys are twisting my arm. Let's do the primer bulb because it's here. So there's fuel that's obviously going to come out. So you have these four screws. Yep, drop that, no big deal. One, two, this one's still in there. Three, four. And just like that, our primer bulb is free. Stick the new one in. And 
most important guys please start these screws by hand or you know start start your screw i'm assuming you guys are using your power tools do not use your power tools on these please please do me that one favor just zip them down by hand because then you could feel it getting tight you can't feel it get tight on your carburetor boom now look at that see as i was priming it's filling up with fuel now we have to hook this all back up so remember this came over right fuel lines are on this side so we're gonna have to hook up this throttle cable and if you guys can see this open hole here this big hole see how that's a nice big hole your throttle cable will go into that big hole like this and pull in and then as we know it goes over so let's get our fuel lines hooked up and try not to get into each other's way remember this accordion went on the bottom. And then the non accordion went up top. Okay, slide it back on. This will go all the way in. And let's just see. See how we're priming? We're pulling fuel. This thing is good to go. So now let's take our choke plate, base, cover, whatever. Slide that in there. Let's get our eight millimeter balls. Come on, give me a spin. Give me a spin. Yeah, baby. We're on. Let's do the next one. Give me a spin. Please. Yep, and we're on there. And I'm just gonna tighten this up. This is why I say you should use your ratchet not your impact because you just want to get these snug. You're gonna feel it get nice and snug. And you're good to go. Our air filter can only go one way. Pressing that in there. Oh, there we go. There we go. Just need a different angle. All right, so let's confirm the repair. Make sure this kit works well. Make sure there is no leaks coming from the fuel lines and the fuel tank grommet. All right, so just gonna clear everything out of the way. Remember, save this. For your next one. Still, it's always confused me which way the switch goes. But I think it goes that way. I think this is choke. I don't know. Prime for a good time. And fire in the hole. No throttle applied yet. Okay, maybe it's this one. Oh, all right, so that's choke. Choke lever's up. Do you need to go down? Okay. All 
All right, guys, this is a success. The two tune-up kits for the price of one. Don't forget, support the channel. Use the link in the description. The Mrs. Pat Taste, Mrs. Pat Taste performance handles all the shipping. So you might likely get a sweet little note from her. All right, tell me what you guys think. Would you buy two tune-up kits aftermarket or one OEM kit for the price of one? All right, guys. Drop your thoughts and comments down below. Thanks for hanging out with me today in the driveway. Smash like button, smash that subscribe button. Guess what? I'll see you guys on the next episode of Pat Taste Performance. Later. Success. Now I just gotta clean this puppy up, give it back to the customer.